adore you Kings and kingdoms bow down Son of God, you are the one You are the one We're living for Sing, sing, sing And make music with the heavens We will sing, sing, sing someone who has helped you out this week? Did you say thank you? I hope you did. Or maybe 
Someone gave you a little something this week that probably brought you a little joy. Did you say thanks? Whatever the situation may be, we should always remember to show gratitude. In today's Bible story, we'll hear about some people that weren't happy with what they were given and had a real bad attitude about it. Check this out. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. While Jesus taught in many different ways, he often shared the most important truths as stories. He used the things and animals and situations in people's everyday lives to help them understand things that were bigger. One day, Jesus explained to his closest friends what the kingdom of heaven was like, and he used a story to help it connect. Now, if he told that story to us today in our world right now, I think it would go a little something like this. There once was a man who owned a large vineyard. Here at Grape Escape Vineyards, we specialize in red, white, and green grapes. One bright autumn day, the man called in his manager to find out how his harvest was doing. It's doing grape. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. We shall pick the grapes immediately before the beetles nibble them up. That's some good raisin in. The next morning, the vineyard owner rose while it was still dark and hurried to the center of town. He arrived at around 6 a.m. and there were people still standing around noshing on grape jelly muffins. Are you looking for work? Yes, indeed. How much do you pay? One hundred dollars for the day. Precisely perfect. Let us proceed. The owner led the workers back to his vineyard. Baskets, hats, uh, don't squash the grapes. Oh, well, what happens if we do that? They might wine a little. The vineyard owner wanted to be sure that the beetles wouldn't ruin his precious grape harvest, so around three hours later at nine o'clock, he returned to the town center and found more people lined up for work. You come pick grapes for me. I'll pay you well. Good deal. Let's go. The workers were all picking as fast as they could, but there were still long rows to harvest, so the vineyard owner went back to the town center at 12 o'clock noon, three hours later, and there were still plenty of workers standing around. Come, help out in my vineyard. And after the new set of workers had worked for three hours, the vineyard owner returned to the town square again at three o'clock. Need some more grape pickers, you in? The blazing sun beat down as the vineyard owner added the new workers to his crew. One of them had hired at dawn, wiped sweat off his face as he sipped his water. Showing up for work in the afternoon. What a terrible work ethic. <sighs> the first workers returned to picking grapes, filling basket after basket. But even though it was still five o'clock, the vineyard owner returned to the town square where he still found plenty of people hanging around counting cockroaches and looking bored. Why have you been standing here all day? No one, like, hired us. I'll hire you. Come work in my vineyard. For the final hour of the workday, everybody pitched in. Whew. As the last baskets of grapes were brought up, the owner called to his manager. Just look at all these beautiful grapes, all freshly harvested. A great job, if I do say so. Pay the workers. Start with the ones I hired last of all. So the manager pulled out his cash box and lined up the workers. He started with the ones who only picked grapes for an hour. Here you go, $100. Like totally rad, man. At the other end of the line, the workers who began at dawn began doing some quick math. A hundred dollars for one hour of work. <laughs> That means we're about to get over a thousand dollars. The manager continued to hand out pay packets to the workers who started at three o'clock. One hundred dollars. And noon. One hundred dollars. And nine o'clock in the morning. One hundred dollars. Huh. 
Okay. By the time the workers who started at 6 a.m. reached the front of the line, they were getting a little bit um, worried. You're paying us what's fair for working all day, right? Yep. $100. What? Preposterous. The early morning workers stalked off to find the vineyard owner. You pay those hooligans who only worked an hour the same as us, even though we sweated all day picking your grapes. Just look at this crispy sunburn. Friends, didn't you agree to $100 for the whole day? That is a technicality. Do you feel cheated because I gave so freely to the other workers? Don't I have a right to do what I want with my own money? But it's not fair. Take your money and go. I want to give the ones I hired last the same pay I gave you. The early workers glared and skulked away, cash in hand. They had let the owner's generosity to someone else ruin their day. Jesus' story made it clear. God gives freely to everyone. Rather than focusing on what you don't have, adjust your attitude. Choose to look at what you do have. So let's be honest with one another. Sometimes we can be a little bit ungrateful. It's true. We can easily think that we deserve the very best at all times. Maybe when we get a gift and then realize that someone else got a better one than us, we begin to feel a little ungrateful. Sometimes we forget to focus on what we've been given because we're too focused on what other people have. We are too focused on what we think is fair. Don't believe me? Ask yourself these questions. Am I jealous when someone else gets more or better stuff than me? Or do I think that I deserve more and better than other people because I think that I'm better than other people? Or maybe this, do I count my presents at Christmas to make sure that I have more than everyone else? If you would say yes to any of those questions, you might need a little gratitude adjustment today. All you have to do when you're feeling a little ungrateful is to take a second and look around all the things around you that you should be grateful for. Let's be honest, things aren't always fair. But guess what? Jesus died for our sins. That wasn't fair. And we didn't do anything to deserve that kind of sacrifice. But Jesus did it anyway to show all of us how much he loved us. So here's the one thing to remember today. Adjust your attitude. Be grateful for what you've got. Don't worry about the stuff that you don't have. That's a lesson for us all today. Guys, remember to check out all of the cool resources we have on our website today. We will see you next week.